Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Love, protected, and safe, I hope. Today's summary from God is on following and obeying His commands the first time you are commanded to. Now let's dive into the event and scriptures concerning this. On Tuesday morning, God commanded me to give the new tent almost all of our clothing, shoes, power generator, camping lights and gear, all our food, cooler, water, cooler, fans, toilet paper, paper towels, shampoo, beds, laundry soap, and buy a birthday cake, pop, and ice for the brother and sister who were at the campsite we were staying at. The birthday cake was for the sister's birthday that day. They are homeless, and we and were in desperate need of these things. They both allowed me to pray for them. They gave their lives to God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that day as God led me to bring them to salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ then baptized them both. We were all crying through this process, but it was a joyful cry. We exchanged phone numbers to keep connected and to help them in their journey with God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Matthew 7, 7 through 14. Ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds, and to him who keeps on knocking it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will instead give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will instead give him a snake? If you then, evil, sinful by nature as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking him? So then, in everything, treat others the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the essence of the law and the writings of the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad and easy to travel. It's a path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss, and there are many who enter through it. But the small gate, the small is the gate, and narrow and difficult to travel is a path that leads the way to everlasting life, and there are few who find it. Just as the siblings had been doing, seeking God without stopping, praying for deliverance, praying that their needs were met, they were delivered from Satan's pit of despair with salvation from God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who was able to carry out his purpose and do superabundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Just as the scripture tells us, my new brother and sister in Christ Jesus were provided for more abundantly than they ever imagined or hoped for as they both quoted this verse after graciously receiving everything God had provided them through his command to my son and I. Matthew 4.19 and he said to them, Follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walking the same path of life that I walk, and I will make you fishers of men. This is part of God's plan and will for my life. I could not have foreseen what my future would hold after my salvation, but I am continually humbled by God's grace and blessings, of which this has been the greatest to date. God, I give God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior all the praise and glory for everything good and bad as it always is sorry as it is always for their good and glory and for the good of all those who love obey trust and have faith in them after this my son our dog and i went to court for an order of protection against my sister for her continued abuse of my son physically and mentally when court was over god directed me to drop off paperwork for the case to the old county sheriff's department as she had not been served as a result of this, my sister was not in court and furthered the court proceedings longer than it should have been. When the deputies came to get the paperwork at the door, they were laughing at me. That was until they noticed me recording them having asked for their names, at which point their laughter turned to worry as he answered my question of his name the second time I had to ask. The reason for this was they have failed to do their jobs the last several times for orders, orders of protection against my sister and mother. They did this because they are part of the evildoers in this world and were trying to get me to stop what God has commanded of me, but I never stop. Psalms 35, 1-28 Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler, small shield. 
and stand up for my help. Draw also the spear and javelin to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who be ashamed and dishonored who seek my life, let those be turned back in defeat and humiliated who plot evil against me. Let them be blown away like shaft before the wind, worthless, without substance, with the angel of the Lord driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing and harassing them. For without cause they hid their net for me. Without cause they dug a pit of destruction for my life. Let destruction come upon my enemy by surprise. Let the net he hid for me catch him. Into that very destruction let him fall. Then my soul shall rejoice in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones will say, Lord, who is like you? Who rescues the afflicted from him who is too strong for him to resist alone? And the afflicted and the needy from him who robs him. Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things I do not know. They repay me evil for good, to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, mourning garment. I humbled my soul with fasting, and I prayed with my head bowed on my chest. I behaved as if grieving for my friend or my brother. I bowed down in mourning, as one who sorrows for his mother. But in stumbling, they rejoiced and gathered together against me. The slanderers whom I did not know gathered against me. They slandered and reviled me without ceasing, like godless jesters at a feast. They gnashed at me with their teeth in malice. Lord, how long will you look on without action? Rescue my life from their destructions, my only life from the young lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among a mighty people. Do not let those who are wrongfully my enemies rejoice over me, nor let those who hate me without cause wink their eye maliciously. For they do not seek peace, but they devise deceitful words, half-truths and lies, against those who are quiet in the land. They open their mouths wide against me. They say, Aha! Aha! Our eyes have seen it! You have seen this, O Lord. Do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Wake yourself up and arise to my right and to my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness and justice, and do not let them rejoice over me. Do not let them say in their heart, Aha, this is what we wanted. Do not let them say, We have swallowed him up and destroyed him. Let those be ashamed and humiliated together who rejoice at my distress. Let those be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves over me. Let them shout for joy and rejoice who favor my vindication and want what is right for me. Let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified who delights and takes pleasures pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and my tongue shall declare your righteous justice and your praise all day long. Deuteronomy 7.23 But the Lord your God will hand them over to you, and will confuse them with a great panic until they are destroyed. These officers, my family, my friends, all came against me over the past decade. But just as the scriptures tell us, God has heard my cries, restored me, and has set fear in all those who oppress and oppose me, as my life is in God and Jesus Christ's will for their kingdom. Their laughter and mocking have all but ceased. They now cower at the very thought of what God has and is continuing to bring them. One by one they have fallen into the very traps that they tried to kill me with. When I got back to my car, God commanded me to go to a hotel with a bad reputation. I instantly hesitated, questioning his command to me. This would throw me into immediate confusion as I started to ask God if we could stay somewhere else. Because I did not follow his command the first time, he allowed Satan to come in to confuse my mind. This was God's correction for my disobedience to his command. Over the next several hours, I kept going from place to fake place, trying to find shelter for the night for us. Then finally, God told me to go to the original hotel he had commanded me in the first place. It was at this time God told me to listen, obey his commands the first time, not to lean on my own understanding, rely solely on him and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. They are not the authors of confusion, to wait on his perfect timing, put away fear, worry, and doubt, that he goes before you, protects you, leads, and guides you. You don't understand now what I am doing, but soon you will. Proverbs 19, 20, and 21, and 27 Listen to counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction, that you may be wise in the time to come. My plans, many plans are in a man's mind, but... It is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand, be carried out. Cease listening, my son, to instruction and discipline, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. God gave me his command, 
and instead of obeying, I was allowed to devise my own plan. Due to this, I was deeply afflicted, confused, and set on edge. That was until I stopped, refocused, asked for forgiveness, and to be put back onto God's will and path for my life. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 15. There is a season, a time appointed for everything, and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What profit is there for the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the task which God has given to the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in his time, in its time. He has also planted in eternity a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, grasp what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good as long as they live, and also that every man should eat and drink and see and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor any, can anything be taken away from it. For God does it so that men will fear and worship him with all filled reverence, knowing that he is God. That which is, alre is has already been, and that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by, so that history repeats itself. <clears throat> Nothing can be added or taken away from God's will and purpose for you. There are always two paths for every choice we make, God's and Satan's, but God orders them all. He will keep bringing them back to you until you learn in time, if you learn in time. Just as with me in trying to find an alternative place to stay rather than where God commanded me to go. Once I did what he commanded of me, all confusion, being on edge, and afflictions were removed by God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. The following scripture tells us of this of this very issue I was facing. Proverbs 16, 1 through 4, 9, 20, 25, and 33. The plans and reflections of the heart belong to man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean and innocent in his own eyes, and he may see nothing wrong with his actions. But the Lord weighs and examines the motives and intents of the heart and knows the truth. Commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked according to their role for the day of evil. A man's, a man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life, but the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. He who pays attention to the word of God will find good and blessed, happy, prosperous to be admired is he who trusts confidently in the Lord. There is a way which seems right to man and appears straight before him, but its end is the way of death. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Isaiah 41, 9-14 through 14. You whom, whom I, the Lord, have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts and said to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you and have not rejected you, even though you are exiled. Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with, with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. Indeed, all those who are angry with you will be put to shame and humiliated. Those who strive against you will be as nothing and will perish. You shall search for those who quarrel with you, but not you will not find them. Though they who war against you will be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I, the Lord, your God, keep hold of your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, declares the Lord. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. John 13, 7 
Jesus replied to him, You do not realize now what I am doing, but you will fully understand it later. Deuteronomy 31.8 It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So we have exhausted our finances doing what God has commanded of us. We have $17 left, two days of food remaining, and shelter until Sunday morning. But just as the scripture says, we do not fear what lays ahead, knowing that God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior will always protect, provide, and lead us in our paths with them. Isaiah 40, 10, and 11 Listen carefully. The Lord God will come with might, and his arm will rule for him. Most certainly his reward is with him, and his restitution accompanies him. He will protect his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom. He will gently and carefully lead those nursing their young. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride, so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Be sober, well balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, be firm in your faith, against his attack, rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. To him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty forever and ever. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5-8 through 8. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways and in all your ways know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your paths straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience, and turn entirely away from evil. It will be health to your body, your marrow, your nerves, your sinews, your muscles, all your inner parts, and refreshment, physical well being to your bones. I was relying on what I knew of the hotel. God told me to stay at instead of trusting in God and relying confidently in him and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This caused stumbling blocks all over that I could not get out of until I recentered on them alone. When I did refocus on them and not the storm, everything smoothed back out. After we checked in, I was spiritually drained, both physically and mentally. I prayed to God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to take away all the negative things from Satan and fill my cup overflowing with everything of them. It wasn't five minutes before the brother and sister called me to tell me of their day and their struggles they encountered. I counseled them both in God and Jesus Christ's will for our lives, how to handle these through the truth of, the, of their scriptures, showing them the bigger picture of how we are to live in God's and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior's righteous way of living in their commands, laws, ways, words, will, and truth. Then we had a bunch of laughs together which filled all of our cups to overflowing by the grace of God and his blessings of true happiness in being with like-minded people of our faith and trust in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His sister told me she saw an immediate change in her brother after we parted ways. He was now filled with hope for his future, with God and Jesus Christ at the center of his life, leading him. He cleaned the tent I gave him, put away and organized everything I gave them, and was no longer brooding over his problems that the evil spirits attached to him had him close to taking his life. They were the reason God had called us to that campground. I could not only see the evil dragging him down, but I could feel it as well. He was literally at the end of his rope before God had me go to him. God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior get all the praise and all the glory for everything. Not by my works, but by their works was I able to reach these two lost souls in Satan's pit of despair in their lives. Through my testimony and God and Jesus Christ's scriptures, which is the only truth in this world, were they saved. I thank God praise and glorify God, Jesus Christ, and their Holy Spirit for choosing me to lead them to salvation from God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Isaiah 40, 28-31 Do you not know? Have you not heard? 
the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become tired or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases power. Even youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Psalms 23, 1-6 The Lord is my shepherd, to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and the presence of the Lord. Psalms 16, 1-11 Keep and protect me, O God, for in you I have placed my trust and found refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good besides you. As for the saints, godly people who are in the land, they are the majestic and the noble and the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows, pain, and suffering of those who have chosen another God will be multiplied because of their idolatry. I will not pour out their drink offerings of blood, nor I will, nor will I take the name, their names upon my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, my cup. He is all I need. You support my lot. The boundary lines of the land have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my heart, mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory, my innermost self rejoices. My body, too, will dwell confidently in safety, for you will not abandon me to Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Philippians 4, 19 and 20. And my God will liberally supply, fill, until full, your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just as the scripture, scriptures tell us, my new brother and sister in Christ, my son and I, have been taken care of. We were all refreshed and renewed in our spirits because God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Savior's love and care for us because we follow their will for our lives and pray fervently for all things. This is why we are renewed, protected, provided for, and saved. Lamentations three nineteen through thirty three. Remember, O Lord, my affliction, my and my wandering, the wormwood and the gall, bitterness. My soul continually remembers them and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is because of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed, because His tender compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is Your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion and my inheritance, says my soul. Therefore I have hope in him and wait expectantly for him. The Lord is good to all those who wait confidently for him. To those who seek him on the authority of God's word, it is good that one waits quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he should bear the yoke of godly discipline in his youth. Let him sit alone in hope and keep quiet, because God has laid it on him for his benefit. Let him put his mouth in the dust in recognition of his unworthiness. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him. Let him be filled with reproach. For the Lord will not reject forever. For if he causes grief, then he will have compassion according to his abundant loving kindness and tender mercy. For he does not afflict willingly and from his heart or grieve the children of men. My brother and sister in Christ, whom God had brought low, and who God exalted to salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, just as they did for my son and I, are the perfect example of this scripture. 
we had to be afflicted to the point of to fully comprehend and appreciate the loving kindness, compassion, mercy, salvation, and everything good from God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If not, we would willingly forget the struggles we went through and turn our backs to them once again. Philippians 2, 1 through 18. Therefore, if there is any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship that we share in spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, having the same love toward one another, knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news regarding salvation, through faith in Christ. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, through factional motives or strife, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example of in selfless humility, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if he did not already possess it, or was afraid of losing it, but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality in his rightful dignity, by assuming the form of a bond servant, and being made in the likeness of men. He became completely human, but was without sin, being fully God and fully man, after he was found in terms of his outward appearance as a man for a divinely appointed time, he humbled himself still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, Sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. So then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation, that is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe-inspired fear, and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is, strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. Do everything without murmuring or questioning the providence of God, so that you may prove yourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated, children of God without blemish in the midst of a morally crooked and spiritually perverted generation, among whom you are seen as bright lights, beacons shining out clearly in the world of darkness, holding out and offering to everyone the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I will have reason to rejoice greatly, because I did not run my race in vain, nor labor without result. But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, for preaching the message of salvation, still I rejoice and share my joy with you all. You too rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. 1 Corinthians 14, 31-33 For in this way you can all prophesy one by one, so that everyone may be instructed and everyone may be encouraged. For the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets. The prophecy is under the speaker's control, and he can stop speaking. For God, who is the source of their prophesying, is not a God of confusion and disorder, but of peace and order, and is in the practice in all the churches of all the saints, God's people. Proverbs 27.1 Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Jeremiah 29.11 For I know the plans and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. This is how we are to live how we are to be patient in our waiting, and at God's perfect timing we will be exalted, shall we endure to the end. Faithfully following, trusting, and obeying God's and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior's righteous way of living in their commands, laws, ways, words, will, and truth, 
Remember that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. No weapons formed against you will ever prosper. God, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. No weapons formed against you will ever prosper. God will never leave nor forsake you. So never give up, never give in. Victory is yours through God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Remember, God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, the angels, and I love you all without question or reservation. May God's love, peace, grace, blessings, joy, mercy, understanding, compassion, caring, kindness, patience, wisdom, protection, guidance, glory, goodness, corrections, truth, trust, favor, anointing, faithfulness, steadfastness, forgiveness, salvation, sanctification, strength, endurance, clarity, courage, calm in every situation, their knowledge and everything good of them, always be with you, guiding you through. Have a blessed day in God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love you all, and I will see you later.